Hi, I'm Jennifer Dale Tam, a simulation educator and nurse educator at the Ottawa Hospital. In these crazy times, we've created this training video for family and caregivers who are going in to see their loved ones in a long-term care facility or in a palliative care setting. This training video is not designed for the casual visitor, but for family members who are an essential part of the team and that will be helping out the healthcare team at the organization. I'm going to explain to you why we use the personal protective equipment that we do and how to take it off and on safely. Personal protective equipment, also known as PPE, protects you against any germs in the organization that they may have. It is important because it prevents you from catching those germs and taking it back to your loved ones and friends outside. It does also protects loved ones and the rest of the facility and anything that you may have unknowingly brought in. Personal protective equipment includes gowns, various types of eye protection, masks, gloves, and hand washing. First, we'll show you how to put on this equipment and then take it off safely. Different institutions will have different types of PPE. It doesn't always look the same, but it will do the same thing. And depending on the outbreak and the type of outbreak that there is, you may be asked to wear a different combination of the two. What is also very important is to wash your hands properly with soap and water or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer like Perel for at least 15 seconds before you put on PPE. When taking off the PPE after the visit, you want to wash your hands before you go up to your face or anywhere near your eyes and at the very end afterwards when you're done. How would I show you how to put on the different types of PPE, including the gown, eye protection, mask, and gloves, and then we'll have the opportunity to practice it. So now I'm going to demonstrate how we go on putting on our personal protective equipment. So the most important step is to do hand hygiene. You want to do it for about 15 seconds and you want to get all aspects of your hands. You want to get the backs and in between the fingers to make sure you're getting sort of the web part there. You want to get your fingernails and keep going. And you want to do it for about 15 seconds. A couple ways to do that is either to count to 15 by using the 1-1000 method or singing happy birthday twice. Um, you can also do it with soap and water, but when you're using an uh, alcohol-based hand sanitizer, it will usually be dry after about 15 seconds. There we go. So now I'm pretty dry. So the next thing you want to put on is the gown. And the purpose of the gown is to protect you uh, from anything that's in the healthcare environment, but also to protect the uh, patient from anything that you may have on your clothing that you don't necessarily know that you have. So you want to take the yellow gown, it could be yellow, could be blue, could be a whole bunch of different colors. It also could be cloth or it could be paper. It really depends on uh, what's happening in the organization or what's available. So it's always important to make sure that you actually to put the ties to the back, not the front. You want to put your arms in and leave the cuff so it's actually over your wrist because you want to cover your watch. And in fact, it would even be better if you took your watch off uh, before doing this because you don't want to contaminate your watch with it. Tie it up at the back and then you also want to tie it at the waist because you just want to provide that extra protection for it. All right, so I'm tied up at the waist there. The next thing to go on would be the face mask, but anytime before you go near your face, you always want to wash your hands again just in case you unwittingly uh, got them dirty. Just a good extra protection. So I'm going to wash again for 15 seconds getting in between all my fingers and so forth and fingernails but it's, it's best if you can actually have short fingernails for it then I'm going to take my mask with the face visor built in again there could be different types there may be one that has an elastic loop or one that actually has a tie but what's really important is that it's, it covers your uh, face your nose and mouth and your eyes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it over to my face here and I'm going to tie up the one at the back first the top here using a bow and I'm going to take the one under my chin and kind of tie it up sort of at the back at the back of my neck I do not want to put it up at the top here because it could slide down so you want the top one sort of at the crown of your head and the bottom one behind your neck pull it underneath your chin make sure you've got a good cover there then you're going to take two fingers from each hand and go underneath kind of the plastic part and seal it around your nose Kind of starting at the bridge and going all the way across. And then we have a good seal. So now, as you can see, my clothing's protected, my mouth is protected, 
and so are my eyes. And then I'm also, pro I'm also protecting my loved one from giving, potentially giving them anything that I may have. The very last thing you want to do is put on your gloves. So with gloves, what's important, you take out two of them. Kind of like when you were a little kid, you want to take the cuff of your gown and you want to tuck it inside your sleeve. You can imagine that uh, you're going outside for winter type thing. So you can see my gown, my cuff is quite inside my sleeve and now my watch, if I had a watch or like I'd have a watch on, is protected and I'm not going to get contaminated there at all. Do the same thing with this one here. Oops. Go in and again, nice, nice strong cuff. I don't know if you can see that there, but that's what we would do. It's super important. Now I'm ready to actually go in and see my family member. Hey, Glenn, uh, why don't you come on the scene and we'll walk you through putting on a slightly different version okay. of this. So, I'm here to visit my grandmother in long-term care. All right, fantastic. I'm all right. not just visiting her, I'm going to be helping feed her. Excellent. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to put on our personal protective equipment. Okay. Remember, you want to protect yourself and you want to protect your loved ones. So the first thing you want to do, wash your hands. 15 seconds. Excellent. Nails. Don't forget the thumb. Good point. I used to forget the thumb before COVID. Yeah. Okay. Between your fingers. Okay. Dry. Dry. All right. First thing on is to put your gown on. No. Cuff. All the way in. And if you have an extra, um, yeah, I'm making a bow because I'm going to be untying it afterwards, yeah. not ripping it off. It's always a good idea. Like if the you, Hulk. Yeah, if you have someone uh, to spot you or watch you put it on, that always helps, or help you sort of on the back. So we'll get the waist tie here. Okay. So then next I'm putting on my mask. Yes. But I'm about to touch my face, so I'm going to wash my hands again. Good. Now I'm going to use a different, slightly different technique without the visor. We're going to do the visor separately. In case you're given a mask like this, again, pinch the nose. Okay. And now good. good. Just remember, you make you don't want to quite pinch the nose. You kind of want to use two fingers. Right. And sort of bring it up. Good. This is your visor. Okay. So the visor has an elastic. Yep. Put it on. Yep. And what's really important with the visor is you want to make sure that it's not kind of pointing like out like a baseball cap. So you want to kind of have it just above your eyebrows to sort of cover that mask. That looks okay. good. Yep. Excellent. Next is my gloves. So yep. I'm going to make sure my cuff is ready to go. Yep. I also didn't take off my watch. You notice he's getting his cuff in there nice and covered. Anything exposed? Nope, you look good there. All right, excellent. So now you can see we look slightly different, but they're still doing the same thing. They're protecting our face and our body before we go in and see other patients or our family member. All right. So we're all done now? Yeah, so now we're going to take off um, teach our... Teach how to take it off safely. Yes. So what we'll do is I'm going to take mine off first and kind of sort of explain to Glenn how to do it. And then Glenn will do his um, and I will kind of give him feedback as need be. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take off your gloves. Um, good thing to do is to take your uh, dominant hand and grab the cuff of the glove and kind of pull it to the outside so it kind of completely turns inside out. Then you can use that glove, because remember, the outside of these gloves are dirty. The inside is still clean. So what you can do is you can use that glove to then pull off the other one. And then it goes directly into the garbage. Okay? Not a bad idea to wash your hands in between, just as a safety component. 
Go again, wash your hands for 15 seconds. Now you want to undo the waist strap first. So we'll untie that, and then you're going to want to undo the top one. Why does it matter the order? Because it is probably a little bit easier because once you grab the top, you don't want to go back down um, because when you grab the top, you're going to kind of lean forward and start pulling it off. Perfect. So you're going to untie the top here in a bow, not in a knot. And you want to do this in a very slow and controlled manner. You're not just going to rip it right off because if there's anything wet on here, it could actually end up being spread anywhere else. So you sort of lean forward and you kind of pull it off the shoulders. Keep pulling. The inside is clean, so you kind of grab the outside there. And then now you can see the dirty part is kind of all can be tucked into itself. Does that make sense? Now we're going to roll it up into this nice little package and put it into either the garbage or the laundry hamper, to kind of depending on what the institution has. Now I'm about to go to my face. So the first important thing is to wash my hands again. What you want to think about is the easiest way to sort of remember it is anything from your ears forward is considered contaminated. So you don't want to grab anything from the ears back. You want to grab at the very back. So what we're going to do is you're going to untie this particular one. I have tied, so I'm going to untie the back. Notice I have not touched my face. And you're untie the bottom one first. Yep. And I have not touched anywhere of the front here. Again, leaning forward, just so I don't get my clothes dirty. There's something on it. And then I'm going to take this, grab the straps, not grabbing the front at all, and put it into the garbage. Lovely. Good. All right. And then on the very last thing is I'm going to wash my hands. All, all right. right. My turn. So I'm right-handed, so I'm going to take my left hand off first. Good. Use the inside. Take off my right hand glove into the garbage. 15 seconds, and height. Good. Next is my gown. Starting at the waist first. Untie the waist. And if somebody accidentally made a knot in your gown, <laughs> would you do? You yep. might need a friend. Yep, I'll untie it for you. All right. Then top. A little bit higher. Very purposefully. Lean forward. Peel away. No, I touch the inside. Touch there. Should touch, touch it again. this way. So yeah, so you can see that it's super important. You gotta be attent paying attention to what you're doing. Not that Glenn's not paying attention to what he's doing, but it's very no, no, easy it's to get. It's very easy to to yeah. make a mistake, and it's so important this part because this is when you have contaminated stuff on you and you want to make sure. Exactly. So I'm just going to move over here so Glenn has access to the Next garbage. This is my visor. So you want to lean forward because you want to make, make sure the edge of the visor does not touch his clothes. So kind of yeah. like stick your chin up. Plastic away from my body. And then my mask. Bottom first. Not oh no, I have, I have ears. So very purposefully from the back. Sometimes it gets caught on my glasses. I don't know how to fix that. So if you kind of pull down. Mm -hmm. Ah, I'll take my glasses off. Can you help? Ah, I've contaminated everything, Jen. Okay. You can buy rocks your glasses. I can buy rocks my glasses. See how hard it is? Great. And you're done. Thanks so much. Not a problem. Your visit was okay? Stay safe out there. So, I'm going to use a uh, disinfectant wipe to uh, clean my glasses now because I dropped them while I was doffing. So, again, every surface. And I'm going to let them dry. And then we'll be good to go. You could. Uh, easily get away with just soap and water, do a good job with soap and water, or I used the disinfectant wipe. Um, I like to use a disinfectant wipe on my phone uh, at the end of every day as well. So you have options.
So what happens if you walk into a long-term care facility um, and they hand you a mask and goggles? Because there are different options out there. So I'm just going to show you how to go about putting these, these two particular things on. I've already put on my yellow gown, so now I'm just about to go to my face. So again, most important part is to wash your hands anytime before you go anywhere near your face. So the first thing that goes on is the mask. This particular one has ties, so I'm just going to tie it up at the back of my head here in a bow and bring it underneath my chin, tie it at the back of my neck. Could also be one that have ear loops that just go behind the ears, but it does the same thing. Starting with two fingers, squeeze it around my nose, and now I still need the eye protection. So now I have those goggles. So what you want to do is you want to grab the front and sort of bring it up over and then snug it up because you want it fairly snug sort of on the sides of the head there with it so it's protecting with it. There we go. All right so now I have my goggles on and then my next step would be to go and put my, glo my gloves on. So now you've seen three different versions of eye protection. The mask with the built-in visor, the mask with a separate face shield that covers the whole face, and then the mask with the uh, goggles. So I'm now done visiting my family members, so now I'm going to take off my personal protective equipment. The worst thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take off the goggles. Now remember, the front is contaminated, so you don't touch anywhere from the ears forward. What you want to do is you want to grab the back, where the strap is, up there, and kind of pull it over. And then depending on sort of the organization, they may decide to uh, clean it. So I'm just going to put this one over here for potential re-sterilization, and now I'm going to take my mask off. So we showed you three different types. We've showed you, shown you the goggles, the mask with visor, and the mask with the visor built in. Remember, it could be anywhere, any organization that you end up with, and depending on what's going on in the institution, there may be areas where you just wear a mask. Um, you would have to talk to the healthcare providers that are in that organization. But we want you to be prepared for everything, because that's what's most important is your safety and the safety of your loved ones.